I was checking the uh, mic. It functions admirably well, uh, apparently. So uh, we will start our panel. We are uh, privileged uh, with, uh, I have to say, a very, very impressive panel on this issue of the major mid-term, long-term issues for the global economy. And uh, it is my pleasure to introduce the members of this panel. The, the first on my left would be Gabriel Felbenmayer, uh, director of the Austrian Institute of Economic Research, the WIFO, and professor at Vienna University. He is also, he was also the head of the IFO Center for International Economics in München, the very famous IFO Institute. And he was also president of the Kiel Institute of the World Economy. So an extraordinary career, if I may, in chairing a very, very important institution. We will then hear what uh, Sébastien Jean has to say. He's a senior associate of the IFRI and a professor of economics in Paris at the Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers. And he holds the chair Jean-Baptiste Say, which is a very, very good mentor, if I may, <laughs> on uh, industrial economy. He's also a member of many, many councils and he has previously been director of the CP in Paris. So thank you, Sébastien, thank to you. come. We are very honored. John is a, an old friend, I have to say. I have to declare <laughs> John is a friend. <laughs> Senior fellow of the Foreign Policy Institute at John Hopkins. Uh, he, is, uh, he was first deputy managing director in the IMF, was also acting managing director of the IMF, and uh, he, was, uh, uh, he had very important uh, uh, position in the private sector. So again, John, you're a globetrotter. We see you in Shanghai, in Seoul, in uh, everywhere in the world, in Delhi, and uh, you were kind enough to come. Thank you very, very much indeed. And uh, we have Marcus Nolan with us, so thank you, Marcus, very much. Executive Vice President and Director of Studies at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. <coughs> and uh, you have been Senior Economist at the Council of Economic Advisors in the Executive Office of the President of the United States. And uh, you, held, you hold research or held research and teaching position in ma many universities, top not universities, including Yale and John Hopkins. So here we are, blessed uh, with uh, your presence. And uh, I think uh, we could say that we are prolonging in the economic sphere what uh, uh, Thierry de Montbrial said a moment ago at the level of the globe and uh, uh, on, on all dimensions, if I may, including technological dimension political dimension, social dimension. We will be more modest. Uh, we will perhaps try to elucidate what are your main messages as regards precisely the main issues for the global economy in the present time. I would certainly say that there are many, many numerous uh, dimension uh, to the uh, questions which he asked uh, explicitly in our panel. I will only list those questions, but as I said, each of us has messages. We'll concentrate on some message, and it is what is important, taking into account their experience and uh, what they have done in the world until now. So I would only mention technology, as said uh, Thierry, is a major, major driving force, and uh, we are experiencing with artificial intelligence something which uh, is particularly striking, but it's only a start. It's only a start. Science and technology are progressing on a very large front. <laughs> I will note climate change, don't insist, green transition. We are in, on a single spaceship, which is planet Earth, and we recognize that we have to take care, all of us, without any exception. 
And if there is a domain where it is absolutely clear that uh, all countries concerned have to take care, it is certainly taking care of the single spaceship in which we are. As another point would be, of course, uh, reflecting on global trade, what happens in global trade, what happens in the hedging of the global, long global value chain. The change of attitude vis-à-vis -vis global change is very striking, has a lot of, uh, I would say, counterproductive consequences, both as regards the growth on the planet and as regards also the push for inflation of the planet if we are not optimizing <coughs> the global value chain as we did before, but clearly this is a very important trend. We have, of course, the fight against inequalities, which was also mentioned by Thierry, I think is a, it is something which is generalized the world over. Advanced economy, emerging economies, all uh, countries and economies on the planet have this threat, uh, which is the looming inequalities. And of course, I will uh, uh, say a word on inflation, which is uh, one of the big, big challenge that we have today. On that, I would only say that I am reasonably confident that the central banks will regain control when time comes. I take it that uh, in the year 25, we will probably have inflation, core inflation, say, in order not to be too depending on the volatility of uh, some prices, but core inflation around 2% in the medium term, which is the single goal, the single definition of price stability that we presently have the world over. It came out of the crisis of Lehman that, uh, again, uh, Thierry mentioned. And I have to say, one of the major <coughs> consequences of the Lehman crisis is that all major central banks that are uh, members of the basket of the SDR, whose the currencies are uh, part of the basket of the SDR, so namely the US, Europe, Japan, and the UK, have the same definition of price stability. I consider that this is something which is extremely important, underassessed, underestimated by, I would say, academia in general, uh, unfortunately, because, again, it's one of the de facto uh, transformation of uh, the international monetary system that should be uh, analyzed and, uh, and uh, studied. 